Hey everyone, welcome back to Joystick News. Today I have a confession to make. My previous video on the first descendant was a rant filled tirade about everything wrong with the game, but after giving it more time and really diving into the experience, I realized I was wrong. This game deserves a second look. Let's dive into what makes the first descendant a game worth playing. So let's start with the big one I was wrong about the first descendant. In my last video, I tore it apart for its repetitive missions, frustrating battles, performance issues, and aggressive monetization. But here's the thing, after spending more time with it, playing with friends, and experiencing more of what it has to offer, I've come to appreciate the game's strengths. Sometimes, first impressions can be deceiving, and I'm here to set the record straight. First off, let's talk about the gameplay and missions. Yes, the missions can feel repetitive, but what I didn't fully appreciate before is the depth and variety that emerges as you progress. The more you play, the more you uncover layers of strategy and tactics. The game encourages you to experiment with different builds and characters, which adds a lot of replayability. The cooperative aspect of the game really shines when you team up with friends. Running missions with a squad adds a whole new dimension to the experience. Coordinating attacks, supporting each other, and strategizing together makes even the most routine missions exciting. It's a reminder that some games are just better with friends, and The First Descendant is definitely one of them. Now let's revisit the combat system. My initial frustration with the endless waves of enemies and ammo issues overshadowed the complexity and fun of the battles. The combat is fast-paced and intense, requiring quick reflexes and smart decision-making. Once you get the hang of it, the combat becomes incredibly satisfying. The variety of enemies and the need to adapt your strategy on the fly keeps things fresh and engaging. The abilities and powers you can unlock for your characters are a game changer. They add a layer of depth that makes each battle unique. Experimenting with different combinations of abilities can lead to some truly epic moments. And let's not forget the boss battles, they're challenging, thrilling, and a real test of your skills. One of the things I initially praised was the game's graphics, thanks to Unreal Engine 5. And that still holds true. The first descendant is visually stunning. The environments are beautifully crafted, the character designs are top-notch, and the special effects during battles are spectacular. As for performance issues, Nexon has been actively working on patches and updates to address the stuttering, FPS drops and crashes. The game is much more stable now than it was at launch. It's clear that the developers are committed to improving the player experience and that's something we should appreciate. Okay, let's talk about the elephant in the room, monetization. My initial take was harsh, and while I still think some aspects could be improved, I've come to understand the necessity of in-game purchases for a free-to-play game. Nexon needs to make money to keep the servers running and continue developing new content. What I didn't fully appreciate before is that most of the monetization is optional. You can enjoy the game without spending a dime. The in-game purchases are there for players who want to speed up their progress or get some cool cosmetic items. And honestly, some of the skins and characters are pretty awesome. If you're willing to grind, you can still get a lot of the content without spending real money. One of the most heartening things I've seen is the community's response. There's a passionate player base that loves this game and provides constructive feedback. Nexon has been listening and making adjustments based on player input. That kind of responsiveness is crucial for a live service game and it gives me hope for the future of the first descendant. The game is still in its early days and there's a lot of potential for growth. Nexon has the opportunity to build on this solid foundation and deliver even more content, features, and improvements. With time, I believe The First Descendant can become a standout title in the looter shooter genre. So there you have it. I was wrong about The First Descendant. It's not a perfect game, but it has a lot of great qualities that make it worth playing. The gameplay, combat, graphics, and community support all contribute to an experience that's fun and rewarding. If you were on the fence about this game, I encourage you to give it a try.
play with friends, experiment with different builds, and see for yourself what it has to offer. Thanks for sticking with me through this journey of reevaluation. I'm glad I took the time to give the first descendant a fair chance, and I hope you will too. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Do you agree or disagree with my new perspective? Don't forget to like and subscribe for more honest game reviews and discussions. Until next time, happy gaming!